Welcome to the Fast Cars, Fast Girls podcast with Abby and Molly. Okay, episode four of season two. Episode four. Okay. Uh, let's warm up the tires. Let's do it. So we're going to run down some news because shit happens all the time now. And then we're going to talk about where races are won and lost. Is it in the pits by it, chance? It, it might be. It, it might be. I think I've heard of it before. I think I've heard that it's in the pits. I think I've heard that phrase before. Like 80 times in one race. Yeah. <laughs> Our woman of the week is Monisha Cattleborn. And then for the shit we didn't make up, we're going to talk about the 1981 shit show, Indianapolis 500. More, All right. More accurately, the aftermath of that Indianapolis 500. The aftermath. So let's start off with the news that dropped... I don't know, maybe an hour after we finished recording last time, NBC is now, in 2019, going to be holding all of the IndyCar races. Yes, they are. So they they do some now, right? So it's split now between a couple of networks. Yes, it's split now between NBC and ABC. <laughs> so um, it's a three-year deal. I can run it down real quick. Three-year deal. They're going to do eight races on cable, and definitely one of those will be the 500. Um the rest will be on, on network. That'll yeah, be on, on network. On network. I don't yeah. have any TV, so everything to me is cable. Yep. <laughs> and then they will. Everything else will be on their NBC Sports Channel, which is, I guess, cable. Then, considering. Yes. Um, then they've got the streaming package, um, NBC Gold. So that'll cover. That'll hold all races, practices, quals, support races. So the Monster Road to Indy. Also, Carb Day, which is interesting. And, it is. And the post-race championship celebration. So, what do you think? Um, I think that that's awesome that we have the ability to see all of that. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see next year what coverage of Carb Day will be like. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be at the concert, but they might. I mean, you never know. <laughs> that would be funny. You, ne- you never know. Um, but, yeah, I will say that NBC, I mean... I tweeted out earlier this week a, a quote of theirs talking about how everybody will will hear about the Indy 500 and what a big event it was. And I was just like, hashtag shots fired. Yeah. Um, they, yeah, they, they've not been mincing words about how they are anticipating to do a better job than ABC. I mean, I think they're going to try and help sell out the 500 is what I've kind of picked up. Which I'm all about. Yeah, I think it's great. Don't get me wrong. The more people we get in there, the more people then can watch it when it's first aired. Absolutely. Um, And, I mean, let's be real. The viewership numbers for the 500 have kind of been going down recently. They've been up the last two years, I thought. No, they were. It was surprising. Last year's was down. Oh. Yeah. I think a big part of that is because it's blacked out here in Indianapolis. I think you're missing a big market when you black out Indianapolis. I think so, too. So I'll be interested to see if NBC keeps with that tradition or if they play the race live. That, uh, you know, some people just don't want to come. Some people just don't want to put up with it. And I understand, like... Yeah, and some people, I mean, aren't able to. It is a huge event, and, you know, there is some ADA seating, but that doesn't mean that every every disabled person is able to come to an event like that. Yeah. It's a large crowd. Yeah. A, I mean, you know, if you can't stand for very long, if you don't have somebody, you know, if you're in a wheelchair, who can push you around. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very big, long day. And not to mention, and we're spoiled because we don't have to deal with it, but the traffic? Yeah, the traffic, the parking, all of that. Like, before I started coming with you, one of my mom and I's favorite thing to do was get up, make coffee, put Bailey's in the coffee, and watch the traffic reports. Mm -hmm. And just, like, flip back and forth between networks because it was insane to watch. They would, like, do, you know, what lot filled up, what street was now closed down. Like, it was great when you didn't have to. Oh, yeah, and the the aerial views of just traffic not moving for hours. Just backed up on bridges that basically were, like, almost within the mile square of Indianapolis. Yeah. It, it was fun when you weren't dealing with it. <laughs> yeah, if you're not in the traffic, it's very entertaining. So, I, so. it'll be fun. I, I hope they do break with it and, and carry it live. And, you know, NBC does what? They do the Olympics. Um, they do. I think they do the Super Bowl. 
Yeah. Yep. They do the Super Bowl. They do some NASCAR events. They do, like, all the horse racing events. So, mm-hmm. and they've done IndyCar, so they know what to do. They do, and they typically do a good broadcast of IndyCar. So, yeah. I'm excited. I'm just, I'm excited to see what it, what it has in store for the future of IndyCar. Yeah. Um, and I guess now, so the next step is to find the title sponsor for next year. And yep. I guess NBC will be playing a role in those sort of negotiations and everything else. Interesting. So I think this is going to cut off any sort of media tied company. So I know that the joke was Amazon could sponsor it, but you know, Amazon has their own streaming service. So they do. I don't think they're in. This is just me guessing. I have no idea. But I don't think they're going to be part of it. No, I would. I would imagine not. No. So we'll see what Can't. happens. Yeah, it'll be. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Um. Well, speaking of the five hundred. Yes. Do, 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 do. Another field update on the Indianapolis 500. We are now officially at 33 cars with Jay Howard. Um, the unofficial announcement that we all were waiting on was made official. Um, he's with SPM, and one of his sponsors is like the One Cure Animal Cancer thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the ones that were kind of like, remember the Phoenix testing? They were all about them at that time. <laughs> Yeah, where they talked about um, so, animals and chemotherapy for animals rather than what was happening on the track. Yes, that one, exactly. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you remember, you remember that, don't you? I do remember that one. Um, who knew that there was a market for them to be a sponsor? Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm just, I think that's about the nicest thing I can say. Yeah. Um, that's, <clears throat> yeah, who knew? Who knew? So that's 33 cars officially, so we have a full field. We are still waiting on the second Dryer and Reinbolt car, so that's 34. Um, yeah. There are a couple more out there that are, t- you know, not official, not unofficial. So we'll at least have 34, probably 35, maybe 36. The, the, la- the latest rumor is that Buddy Lazier is not coming back. Really? And it's... <sighs> And I will be honest, I'm a little behind in all of my other podcasts, except for On Track. (laughs) (laughs) But apparently this was mentioned on a recent um, Trackside, the 1060s podcast. Um, Oh, yeah. They kind of, somebody said they mentioned it on there. I've not heard it yet, so I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. It's going to be, like, he needs to stop, but it's going to be weird. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Because... Buddy, it's Buddy. Like, he's always there, and now he's not. Well, I wonder if he's backing out because there's going to be bumping this year because he was not fast at all last year. Not fast enough. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? Buddy could pull the... I think it's a funding issue, too, probably. Well, I think that... I mean, he owns his own race team. He does, but, I mean, you can own your own race team, and then you got to put up all the money to get in. Yeah, but I think he just does the Indy 500. Like, I, ju- I think he just does that, and that makes him enough money for the whole year. I guess. I don't know. I think that's been his game plan for quite a while. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> so, interesting. Well, it would be like the end of an era. It kind of would be. I'm not going to be sad about it, but okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to go out and celebrate, but... <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I didn't write this down, but today, Danica Patrick revealed her helmet for the 500. Oh, what's it look like? It's it's kind of a patriotic theme. I guess it's okay. a throwback to some of her earlier helmets. Having I can't say that I have spent time staring at Danica Patrick's earlier IndyCar helmets, but... Um, I have not. She put it out on excuse me, on Instagram, and it looks it looks sweet. I mean, it's a red, white, and blue theme. There's some subtle, nice. subtle stars. And like I said earlier, like, if you're going to do the 500 and you have any opportunity to go patriotic, you have to go big. I mean, I agree. Why not? I agree. Why not? So we're still waiting to see, I think, what her car is going to look like. Hmm. And I, we were going to see it tomorrow, for the, I, I would imagine tomorrow, for the rookie orientation but that is not happening for good reason 
Yeah. Yeah. Or it today, I guess. This week. We're recording yeah. on Tuesday. This drops on Wednesday. I always get that mixed up. On Wednesday yeah. or today, they're supposed to be the rookie, but uh, it has rained solidly all day. So when they canceled it on Friday and I got cranky, it did rain today. It did. So that was a good call. It was. I'm still mad. Although Chip Ganassi is whining about the rookie orientation program. So Chip, Chip, and it doesn't escape anybody that Chip put his little whine out the same day that Jay Howard announced that he was coming back to the 500. I mean, not surprised by that at all. Everybody went, okay, but we get what you're trying to do. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's bitching about the rookie orientation program. I guess in the olden times, uh, back when Chip was a rookie... <laughs> So it was like the same setup, you know, you've got your three series of laps, but I guess in his mind, the veteran drivers that were involved were a lot more active in the process. So I guess the, they would like tell the rookies like what, what for, and if you didn't pass their muster, then you didn't get to drive on the track. Interesting. And so that's so, they, so it wasn't just about, you know, meeting these objective qualifiers there was also a bit of, you know, they would give you pointers of, like, you need to leave space here. You need mm-hmm. to be at this position at this part of the track. Right. And if they just felt that you weren't safe or that you weren't listening, then you just didn't pass. Which, that's still part of it, but I don't think it's an active role. So, like, you still have to do your, like, three different levels. And, you know, everything is monitored by officials and active drivers. But I'm guessing now those officials and drivers just aren't saying anything. Yeah. It's more like, all right, you did it at this speed. Okay, you did it at this speed. You didn't crash. You weren't, like, weirdly crowding somebody. You're you're fine. Yeah. I wonder who those veteran drivers are that are, like, part of it. I, I'm very curious. Because, I, I mean, Chip, obviously, when he talked about it, he kind of talked about, like, Dixon should be more vocal and be a part of it and basically tell them, like, you know, this is the 500. This is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Like, this isn't your grandma's basement kiddo like this is the real deal you can hurt like it, it's you a monster somebody. You like can... you have to know what you're doing yeah like you, you just can't so yeah <clears throat> which is weird i know veteran or um, rookies have all of the um people monitoring them and everything else i don't know the refresher just kind of talked about they have to do the final two so the higher speed um phases yeah, and I think that they, you know, could work on other things that they think they might need. Can they? Okay. I wasn't well. sure. All right. Cool. Yeah, I am sure that they have the option. Well, yeah, I just don't know. Again, is it, it just seems like they're like, yep, okay, you did 205 to 210 laps. Yep, you did 210 to 215. All right, yep, you did over 215. You're done. Thanks. See you later. I mean, but you have to maintain that. It's more, I mean, it's a little more nuanced than that. Well, I mean, you have to stay within that, you know, speed for like 10 yeah like 10 laps and then 15 and 15 yeah 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 but i think chip wants the veterans to kind of speak up and talk which i don't i don't think that's a bad idea i think that's actually a good idea i mean i yes and no yeah um because you have to have it be mostly objective yeah Um, you know and you also don't want too many chefs in the kitchen I think it would be more like perhaps the veteran, because like race control officials are there. So maybe there's a huddle of those, of that group. And then kind of race control has that final say, like, all right, thanks drivers. We heard what you had to say, but you know, he's doing a fun job or whatever. Yeah. Kind of have that sort of like, no, definitely have a check in there. So the veterans just aren't like, screw you guys. You're not getting in. Right. Or, you know, yeah, it just could be. A lot, a lot of different people talking your ear at once. No, I, oh, I wouldn't want them to be all on the rookie's face at the same time. That would be horrible. Yeah, no. I have social anxiety for the rookie right now, actually. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, Chip wasn't really specific other than just saying that the the driver should be more vocal. Right. So I'd be curious as to what exactly he means because he... He brought this problem, but he doesn't really have a specific solution. Thank you. I wanted to make sure I wasn't, like, I've read that article three different times, and I was like, but he doesn't, he doesn't have a solution? He's just whining. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're just, we're just complaining. Okay. We're, oh, well. That's that's what's happening? Well, you can go sit with Tim Sendrick and Will Power in the corner and complain together. Yes. You can join the pouty corner. 
You can you can all talk about how life isn't fair. <laughs> Oh, that will never not get old to me. Oh, nope. No, can't wait. Now, after every race, I'm going to pray for a willpower interview. Just, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes he makes it hard for me to enjoy him as a driver. He, he does sometimes. He does sometimes. He really does. Oh, uh, so. Yeah, Chip's complaining. Everybody caught that he did it the same day that Jay Howard announces you're not fooling anyone, Chip. Sorry. Right. Like, sorry, but not sorry. Well, and he says, you know, that he's not trying to call anybody out like Jay Howard. <laughs> oh, okay. That's why you just called him out. Thanks, yeah. Chip. Thanks, Chip. So, we'll see. Um, they did test, though, Friday. They did. Which we didn't go to because we thought they were testing Day and Wednesday. To, to day. Yeah, we thought we were testing Tuesday, so. That was cranky. Um, it was the road course, and let's see, so as far as speeds con were concerned, it went Rossi, Power, Jordan King, um, Joseph Newgarden, Pagano, and Pagano, so that was your top five. Nice. I'll tell you what, Jordan King is continuing to, like, be solid. Like, that's a, yeah. I mean, he's in, he's in the top five, he beat... Spencer, so, I mean, he he was quicker than the reigning champion. I'm very excited to keep watching him. I am, too. I mean, he is, he's putting in some work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Wiggins, Wiggins did very well at St. Pete, but we're going to have a really good battle for Rookie of the Year. We really are. So, it's, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy watching, um, I enjoy watching rookies do well. I think it's fun. I do, too. It's very fun. Um, let's see. They also talked to all the drivers afterward about how they felt the car was handling. And from what I can gather, this car is a lot of fun to drive. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Will obviously thought it was difficult. Well, Will thinks everything is difficult. Because Will thinks everything is difficult. Um, Life is difficult for Will. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Pagano, Simon thought that braking is now going to be p playing a big part in all of this. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. He said because the yeah. way it handles into curves and turns, you have to really brake a lot different. A lot. Oh, God, that was horrible English. English. You have to. But that makes sense that you would have to brake differently. Yeah. Because it maneuvers differently. Yeah. Obviously, Scott basically had fun, and he said that he see it just seems like he seems real comfortable in the car, so... Per use. Scott doing Scott things. Hashtag Scott things. Yep. And then Graham said he's still getting used to the car, which is kind of what we figured out at St. Pete. Yeah. When the front yep. end is good, the back end is bad. When the back end is bad, the front end is good. Like, okay, still working on that car. Yep, still figuring it out. So, so not... It's... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's going to be interesting at Phoenix. Yeah, this is the uh, first oval. Yep, it's the first oval, and then we've got Long Beach, and then the Indy GP. Well, and Barber as well. Barber, yeah. Um, but I, I would imagine that we thought the Indy GP looked like Mario Kart last oh. year. That they were going to be all over the place this year as well. It's going to be insane. Yeah, it's yeah that people are going to be off the track everywhere. Everywhere. I, I can't. I know. So Long Beach is a street course. So they don't really have as as much runoffs as they do in the temporary street course. Barber's a permanent course, so they'll have some runoffs, but there just seems like there's a lot of runoff areas for the NDGP. There are. Um, Especially that first so. big turn. <laughs> yeah. So, oh my. It's going to be fun. I think it'll be quite entertaining. Yeah. So, yeah, so they, just, I'm sure everybody knows, they adjusted the testing schedule. So April 30th is the oval test now at the IMS. Yes. And then May 1st is Rookies and the Refresher. So um, Danica will be there on the 1st. And Excellent. then um, May 2nd, the manufacturers are testing. So um, the 30th and the 1st, if you can't see it live, they will stream it. They will not live stream the manufacturer testing, but you can still show up. That's true. So FYI, in case somebody is living under a rock and this is the first time you've heard it. Yep. Yeah. You can stream that all live. 
And it's like racecontrol.indycar.com. So, well, let's see. A quick detour from the 500, but still at the IMS. The Brickyard. Apparently, Florida Georgia Line is sponsoring the Brickyard. Kind of. Okay. Um, I guess, yeah, because like last year it was Brandy Gilbert and the Big Machine label, and now it's Florida Georgia Line and the Big Machine label. Excellent. And vodka. And vodka, yeah. They also have a vodka. I've not tried it yet. But we will. But, I mean, you know, we'll drink as the locals drink for the Brickyard. We will. And uh, they also, Florida Georgia Line is also going to be headlining the music festival that weekend. Um, it's a three-year commitment, and so last year they had all of the, like, EDM, like, Chainsmokers, and then yeah. a lot of EDM bands that, I, well, one band with one of the Jonas Brothers was there, but they're moving away from that more into country, which kind of makes sense for the weekend. It does. So, Florida Georgia Line will be there. Excellent. They did that song with Nelly, in case you don't know who they are. <laughs> So there you go. Oh, yeah, speaking of that, um, if the Indy Star could remember how to spell Doug Bowles' name, that would be helpful. Yeah, that would be great. I Thanks, mean, guys. We we know how to spell our guests' names. Do you? If you could have somebody, you know, proofread things before you put them out, that'd be great. It's cool. It's cool. I, I get it that print is a dying art, but come on, guys. This is why. Yeah. Um, I also it's shit like this. That's why it's a dying art. That's exactly like on the internet. People expect typos. Yeah. They don't want them in their newspapers. Nope. We don't want them in print. Nope. That's not how we roll. Nope. All right. So we've got new cameras on the cars. Yeah. We keep forgetting to talk about this, but they have started to roll out the footage from the St. Pete um, race. Yes. On all, so they've got one behind the driver, which they've had before. Yep. Um, they now have it on the side pod, and I'll tell you what, I've not seen the side pod camera yet, but I bet it's interesting. Oh, I bet it's great. I bet it's awesome whenever there's contact on the sides. Oh, snap. Just shit flying everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, um, there's a visor cam. Yeah. Um, the nose cam is the one I'm the most excited about. Did you see they've started to put out some nose cam footage? Yeah. Oh, it's insane. It's awesome. Like, you... I think you get a feel for the speed with the nose cam. Yeah. The, the others, like, you can tell they're moving, but that nose cam, you just see everything stream past it so much quicker than... Yeah, because it's so much closer to the ground. Yeah. It definitely, you definitely get a better feel for how fast they're going. Yeah, it is. Whew. Kind of insane. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. Um, a wheel guy has a cam. That was cool. One of um, RHR's guys had one of the cameras on last time. That's awesome. So that's always, I love that. That's fun to see that. Um, and then they got one on the back of the car. The booty cam. Yep. Or rear attenuator. I mean, if you want to be technical but, about it. Booty cam. But it's the booty cam. Let's... Yeah, it's the booty yep. cam. Okay. And I promise to sing the booty song every time they put that up on the screen somewhere. I'm going to hold you to that. It's going to happen. It's one of my favorite things to start singing, so don't worry. I'm going to hold you to that. So, I, I mean, right. I think the cameras are fun. I think it, it offers another perspective. Again, like, putting it online, it just it's just another way to reach people. So, I'm excited. Agreed. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah. So, it'll be fun. All right. And then we have some events coming up here in Speedway. We do. So, April 19th is actually the Taste of Speedway at yeah. the Dolara Factory. Um, and you can buy tickets for that anytime. Are we going um, to and then April 26th is Behind the Wheel. Which is real, 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 real fun. I think I'm going to go to the um, Taste, but I think Behind the Wheel is going to be a lot more fun. I mean, Taste will be fine. I mean, they'll both be fun, but yeah, yeah. I'm with you. So Behind the Wheel is going to start at the Delara Factory. You're going to get a tour of the factory. Um, it's a great chance to network. Yeah. Um, a great chance if you don't know much about any car and you want to learn a little bit more about it. Um, and to just kind of rub shoulders with other young professionals in and around Speedway and in and around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So, yeah. I mean, so yeah, it is 21 and over. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll kind of, it'll, it's going to hit a couple different places. One of them, obviously, being Delara, the Floyd Winery, um, and 1911 Grill. I mean, I would imagine, and I, I honestly don't know, that probably, maybe, I mean, Harding Racing is right there now. I know Yukos yep. is a sponsor. 
Bell Helmets is now on like Main Street. Like there's a lot of places it could go. Tickets are available. Um, we will put it out on our social media and kind of re up it every now and then because you know we're kind of big fans of Speedway Indiana. We are. And if you're yeah. in and around the area, it's you should go. I mean, it starts at like what, like four, four thirty. I think four thirty, yeah. Four, and I think it's over with by eight. So, honest to Pete, if you're anywhere near Indianapolis, uh, you should definitely check it out. Yeah, you absolutely should. It'll be it'll be a good time. Um, and I've not ever been to to an event like this in Speedway. I've been to the Taste of Speedway before, which was very fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think this will be a great great chance to network and. And just have a good time and learn some more about racing. Yeah, I mean, it's, how can you beat it? You can't. Well, it's time to talk about a subject that's very near and dear to us. Yes. Where races are won and lost. Is it the pits? It 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 might be. I, I've heard it said a few times now that races are won and lost in the pits. And so we we should we should talk about what goes on in, a, in the pits. All right, let's do it. All right. So there's your normal pit stop, which everybody uh, recalls seeing. And it's, you know, your tires are changed. They're going to add some fuel. They might make an adjustment to your wing. And that all happens in under 10 seconds. And speaking of tires, so (laughs) apparently the gun to change the tires, so the one that kind of zips in and out the lug nut, cost $4,500. Well, that's more than my car's worth. (laughs) I know. Um, The socket that holds the lug nut is $1,500. Also more than my car's worth. (laughs) And then they actually use the same lug nut. I mean, they carry spares on them, but they use the same lug nut, and that lug nut is worth $400. That's a very expensive lug nut. It's a very expensive. I think you can replace all four of your tires for less than that. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe not with, like, great, great tires, but you could get a, a tire change for less than that. Definitely. So they add 18 and a half gallons of fuel. Yeah. And it is fueled via gravity. Yeah. So they're not in there like, you know, at a gas station, there's a little bit of like a push. They're just there basically putting a barrel in a pipe in your car. Interesting. Yeah. I found that very interesting to read. I went on a deep dive in popular mechanics. It's fine. Yeah. I didn't realize that they uh, did it by gravity. That's very interesting. Isn't that? I mean, I see it now that I think about it. I see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wonder why. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. I'm I, curious. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. I'm curious. All right, so that's a normal pit stop. Yeah. So what's our oh shit stop? Oh shit. Oh shit. You know, that's the one where the pit stop looks like a hive of bees. Yep. Um, And I mean, we've seen them do so they can replace the foil, you know, all of the rear wing. They can replace that whole nose cone just like pops off and pops on. Sure does. Um, we've seen side pot, like that side area of a car. That happened in Watkins Glen. Um, Joseph. Remember yeah. Joseph's accident? Yeah. They had to replace that whole like side back piece of his car. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then sometimes they have to deal with electrical gremlins, which can involve literally restarting the car. Yes. Yes, it can. Turning it off and turning it on. <laughs> <laughs> but have you turned it off? Have you tried turning it off and then back on again? I mean, that would be my first. Like, if I were in a pit and someone's like, something's wrong with the car. Have you tried turning it off and on again? (laughs) You just became every IT person everywhere. It's honest to Pete. If somebody, I don't know why people call me with IT questions, but that's my first. Like, maybe just restart it. Do a hard restart on the phone. That's my. Let's just, let's do a hard reset. That's my big thing for phones. Do a hard reset. That clears 99% of the problems. It does. So. It's true. And those don't usually last under 10 seconds. Like, if they're going to have to go no. to an oh shit stop, like, all right, we're going to have to sit here for a minute or two. Yep. Yeah. Now, they're only allowed to have six people over the wall, correct? That is correct. By rule, only six. <laughs> all right. So you're limited on how many people can be doing different things at one time. Yeah. Now, I will say, so I know F1, from what I have watched, it looks like perhaps 40 people are over the wall. I know that 40? I, I know that, yes, yes. It, I don't think that's the right number, but there's at least, I think there's 12. I don't know. Good God. But they have, like, uh, it's insane to watch an F1 pit stop. 
Like ours yeah, are like a whole football team on the side of the wall. Basically, yes. But I think they replace all four tires at once. They've got somebody to, like hold the tire, somebody to replace the tire. Instead of just like one guy running around doing one tire, holding it, replacing it, carrying the old one back, shit like that. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. So they have six, four guys change your tires. One for each tire. Makes sense. Makes sense. It does. Yeah. Your inside guys get to go out. So the guys who are standing right on the wall, they can hop over the wall like a lap before the guy pits. And get in position. Right. The guys on the outside cannot, and that's really just safety. Yeah, that makes sense. They I mean, have to wait till the car actually comes in and then run out. Yeah, you don't want people just kind of hanging out on pit lane. I get it. Nope. No. Um, I think the guy that I would like to be is the front tire guy because he gets to give you the signal of, it's cool, you can go now, buddy. Yeah. I that kinda, guy's the gatekeeper. I kind of want that power. Yeah, he's the gatekeeper for sure. Yeah, he definitely He's like, oh, oh, hold, hold, hold. Okay, you can go, you can go, you can go. It's cool. Let's see, the rear guys give the car a little bit of a push out of the pits. Yeah, you usually you see them kind of running behind the car, pushing it, which I guess helps. <laughs> I mean, it's humorous. I mean, if there's a lot of skepticism, guys. I don't know how much that helps, but okay. As long as you believe that it does. <laughs> right, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. As long as you believe your job's important, nobody else has to. It's fine. It, it, it helps you sleep at night. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> Um, let's see. The air jack guy. Yeah. So he uses an air jack thing, a receptacle. I've tried to figure out how this works. I can't find it on the internet. And so I stopped. <laughs> That's all right. Because there's apparently like an onboard jacking system in the car. Really? So they really just kind of plug something up and I'm a, I'm guessing they hit a button and it just kind of jacks up instead of them having to like manually jack it up and everything else. Like there's a system... On board of that, on board that car. That's fascinating. Yeah, and obviously, if that doesn't work, they have to bring up like the lever and like manually yeah. jack it up. So, but yeah, huh? Yeah. And then of course, there's the fuel guy. There's the fuel guy. <laughs> um, and everybody has to wear full fire suits with no masks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, let's we'll see. Everything's pneumatic. They use compressed nitrogen. Yes. So it's it's fun. Nitrogen is fun, kids. Nitrogen is fun. Nitrogen is fun. So I think a lot, you know, pneumatic, we usually don't think of nitrogen, but that's what they use, and I bet it's for safety reasons. I'm sure. So, yeah. Well, so, excellent. Let's see. There is some strategery to stops. Like, I know we... Oh, there's lots of strategery. We, we give it a lot of bullshit, but, I mean, there really is strategery behind... Pit stops, what are you going to do, everything else. There really is. Um, and, like, the tires wear differently based on what kind of a course you're on. Yeah. On your ovals, you know, your inside tires are going to wear differently than your outside tires. Yeah. And, um, and on your road courses. Yeah, and it depends, like, what tires are you going to choose? Are you on, you know, fresh black, sticker red, scuffed, all of that. All of that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with your choice of tires, it's... It, depending on the course, depending on how everybody else is running, it might behoove you to be on a different tire. And, by the way, if you want to learn all about tires, in episode 33 of season one, we lay it all out for you. We do. Let's talk tires. So, uh, you know, give that a listen. Listen to this one first, then go give that a listen. Please. You can give that a listen if you want to know some more about tires. Yeah. So, let's see. Um, clean air obviously means they're using less fuel. Yeah. Um. If you're chasing someone using push to pass, you're going to need more fuel. So, you know, you got to factor all that into your pit stop equation. You do, um, especially if it's like the last pit stop of a race. Yeah. Maybe you don't need a full gas tank. Maybe you only need part of it and you want to keep the car a little bit lighter. Keep it a little sleek. Yeah. Lots of, lots of strategy, lots of math and physics that goes into that. There is a lot. Apparently, when guys are like talking and giving fuel numbers, I, it sounds like there's just people crunching numbers somewhere. Yeah. I don't know if they're on pit row. I'd like to pretend that they're all just back in a room somewhere, just all of them, like, hunched over desks doing math. In my mind, it's a room like Mission Control in the movie Apollo 13. Yes! Um, where, like, yeah, there's just a room full of people like Mission Control just doing a ridiculous amount of calculations and equations. Yep. I am on board with that. 
that's what I envision. I don't know where that place is, but in my head, that's what I envision. I like that. Mine was just desks like some, like, you know, 1950s Russian school, and they're just all bent over doing long form math. <laughs> <laughs> but I like yours better. Yeah. I mean, still, yeah, just furiously writing. Just fast because they're just they keep getting numbers and everything so and that's part of what you hear when you listen on the radios you can hear them talk about different fuel and like what levels they're using for different things and somebody just is doing math yeah somebody is definitely doing math so if there's there's a lot that has to do with it and also about where you are in the pack when you want to pit yeah Um, because sometimes you can pit and you'll be in the middle of a big group of cars and when you get out of your pit then you'll have clean air and you can make up time um and so I mean, oh, I think we heard that in St. Saint Pete. I don't know who was on the radio, but they said, come on in, come on in and pit. We'll get you out in a, in a cleaner part of the pack. And I was like, I mean, okay. Yeah. And then, of course, so, obviously, if you're leading and you got to pit, you know, do you pit now? Can you build up more of a lead? Like, that's all important. And It's if, very important. And what kind of a pit strategy is yeah. your opponent on right and if your opponent is pitted like okay can you build up enough reserve to then jump in pit and still have a lead yeah it's insane i mean we we make a lot we we give a lot of shit but it's true it's true a lot of your race is determined in the pits it is i will still cringe every time that that phrase is said though (laughs) oh every single time yeah i think every single time it might have to be like a drinking game or we're watching it via broadcast yeah well and it happens on nbc so we will not be disappointed with that (laughs) no (laughs) yeah that's gonna be our nbc drinking game it's it's katie hargity's drinking game i mean and races are won and lost in the pits (laughs) drink fun facts fun fun facts so bobby unzer in 1976 at the 500 set a new record with a four second pit stop that is fucking fast. Yeah, and I think it was like a tire, like it was a, a it wasn't just a splash and go. They actually changed tires. I believe that they did. That's impressive. Yeah, I could be wrong. Don't at me if I'm wrong. I'm just wrong. It's fine. Yeah, I'll that be. is impressive. Yeah. And then in 2013, F1 had a 1.92 second pit stop. Right, but I do want to remind everybody they they have 40 people there. Yeah. I mean, maybe not 40, but still. Yeah, they've got, like, a, a kindergarten class on the other side of the wall. Now I'm actually picturing kindergartners doing this. <laughs> I mean, they are small. That's true. they got little number fingers. I mean, I think the tires yeah. will be about as big as them, though. I, yeah. So, that's a problem. Now I'm picturing, like, munchkins. Like, a, a pit crew of munchkins of little people. And I've been on, like, a Wizard of Oz kick, so now I, I can see it. I mean, I feel like they give you a run for your money. I feel like you should, if you had a pit crew of munchkins, that you should be able to have twice as many because they're only half the size. I mean, I don't know if I can... fair, right? Now we're talking about people not being full people, and I don't think I can officially (laughs) say... (laughs) You're like, I'm not not touching that. Um, Um, I can't... Uh, I had to do, like, this whole swearing to uphold shit, and that's, you know, there's a whole issue with that, but... I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying that I legally know. they are not full people. I'm just saying, in the context of a pit crew, <laughs> if they're half the size, I should be able to have two of them. Your logic is not unsound. Like, it's straight logic. I will give you that. Just, just putting it out there. Just, ah. <laughs> All right. Well, some fun with pit stops. Yeah. So every year on Carb Day, we have the Pit Stop Challenge. Which is... We've been doing that since 1977. This is your sister's favorite event of Carb Day. It is my sister's favorite event of Carb Day. Ask her how many times she's seen it live. Um, (laughs) So... (laughs) Alive? Live or sober? Which question? (laughs) Well... (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, they're it both was... single digit answers. Okay, I'll tell you that. It was right there. Like I yeah, had they're to. both they're both single digit answers and lower than you'd expect. Oh. Um, <laughs> you know, whatever you're thinking of, it's a low one. <laughs> so it follows the final practice session for IndyCar before uh the Indy five hundred. Right. And so it is a single round elimination tournament, yeah. bracket style, just yep. like 
your March Madness. Um, they've had up to 12 teams. Yes. Um, and your qualifying is based on your prior pit stop performance. Yeah, or if you're one of, like, the top, like, if you're one of the top teams, so, like, Penske usually is always there. Although they also do well on pit stop performance, too, so. They do. So, um, two cars line up on a grid. There's faux pit boxes on a faux lane, similar to drag racing strip. Yeah. Cars are at standing start, then racing the pit box. And the pit crew must change out four tires, hook up a dummy fuel hose, and then the cars race to a faux finish line. Yeah. And the fastest car wins. And then apparently, like, their last, so that's how they kind of get through it. And then I guess at the championship, I think they do best two out of three. Yes. Yeah. So. And there, there are penalties. There are. Um, unsecured lug nut. <laughs> jumping the start. <laughs> Pit box violation. Which is funny. If you look at those, two out of the three really are like driver error. Only one involves your pick. <laughs> yeah, right? The like, only one that involves them is the unsecured lug nut. Which I feel like they just know to do that. But, well, no, somebody got a, I was reading through, somebody's gotten a penalty before for an unsecured lug nut. That just makes me think of that Ron White joke. I. When he talks about, yeah. Every time they sent this guy to tire college, <laughs> he was the lug nut guy. He missed lug nut day. Yeah. Apparently he missed lug nut day. Uh, every time I read this word, I started giggling. I just, I can't even, yeah, here's the word lug nut without thinking of Ron White at this point. No. No, but it's just interesting <laughs> that two out of the three of those violations are due to driver error. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Penske has won the most as a team. Yep. 17. Alio has won the most as a driver. Eight. Um, and he won the challenge two of the years he won the Indy 500. So. And there is a, not a causative, um, but a, a correlative, um, like a correlation with the winner of the Pit Stop Challenge and the Indy 500 winner. Yeah. There is a positive correlation. I would agree. Um, that the winner of the Piss Up Challenge also wins the Indy 500. It doesn't happen every year. So, I don't know exactly what the percentage is off the top of my head. But it's, I think you're right. I was, I know it didn't happen last year because last year, um, Will, Will had 11. Will came in first and Hinge came in second. So for yeah. the Pit Stop Challenge, not for the Indianapolis 500. No. Yes. Yeah, for the Pit Stop Challenge. But, whoa, whoa. But yeah, more, more often than not, the winner of the Pit Stop Challenge also wins the Indy 500. I really feel like that's, an, that's a very interesting statistic that not a lot of people really think about. It is an interesting t- statistic. Um, easy for me to say. I know. Um, and it does go to show what, you know, what an important thing those pit stops are, especially in a race that long. You know, in a shorter race, you're not going to have as many pit stops. But in a 500-mile race, I mean, you're, you've got a, a decent number of pit stops. And so – yeah. You know, your team screwing up one pit stop can be the difference between you finishing second and finishing sixth in that race. Oh, I would 100% agree. I would 100% agree. So, yeah, it's very interesting. And I think, continuing my love for the Bomberito track, well, not for Gateway, and then for the Bomberito race, um, they actually did, like, a, a, a similar thing of a pit stop challenge last year. Uh, which which was, I love. It was super fun to watch. And instead of having, like, the race down, I think because their their pit lane and everything, I think their track is just set up differently. The drivers had to do, like, a full lap around the track and then come back into the pit box. Very cool. Yeah, it was fun, you know. That is fun. Because I think we missed, we missed the pit stop challenge last – pit stop? Oh, my. <laughs> we don't miss any of those, okay? We, we do not. We're well hydrated and we pee every time. Yes, we never we never pass a bathroom. No. But we did miss the pit stop challenge last year. Um because we were well, we were observing, we were people watching. We really were. But we found a really good place to post up last year. Yeah, we had a we had a great place to post up and people watch. It was fantastic. Fun. So but we will be watching it this year. We'll be videoing it, so Yeah, we'll we'll be there. We'll make sure it's all it's all out there. You know, month of May is is sooner than people realize. Yep, it's right around the corner, and you can find everything about the month of May by following us on our social media. Um, you can check out our website, www.fastcarsfastgirls.com, and you can find access to everything everything from there. You mm-hmm. can uh, subscribe to our podcast, uh, 
So please do that. Share it yep. with your friends and family. Like, rate, review, all that good stuff. Yep. Um, you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash fastcarsfastgirls, or search Fast Cars Fast Girls in the Facebook search bar. You can find us on Instagram, at Fast Cars Fast Girls, and on Twitter, at Fast Cars in 317. We also have a YouTube, Fast Cars Fast Girls, and I think that's about it. Snapchat, but... We do have a Snapchat, but... Um, it's there's nothing exciting happening on Snapchat right now. So, but it is Fast Cars F S T G R L S. Yes. So, but it will be up and running and exciting the entire month of May. And maybe you know, with the um, couple of races that we're able to watch together, maybe we'll snap or or, or at least live tweet a few things. Not during the race because we stop during the race. Yes, because we're paying attention. But <laughs> we actually pay attention for once in our lives. For once. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, yeah. Definitely check it all out. We uh, appreciate it. A-P-P-L-E-S-H-I-T. It. <laughs> Sorry. That's not how you spell that's that. That's not how you spell it. I know, but that's how, that's the thing. Anyway. <laughs> yep. All right. Let's continue. So, our woman on. of the week. Our woman of the week is Monisha Cattleborn. She is known as the first lady of Formula One. Um, and All right. I hope one day to meet her because she is now my idol. <laughs> she was the former CEO of Sauber Motorsports, Saber Motorsports, however you're going to pronounce it. And she was actually the first female to have such a position in Formula One. Um, Good for her. Starting all off, she graduated from the University of Vienna with her law degree. So wow. already a badass. Like, not only a lottery, yep. but from the University of Vienna. I'm sure that's not an easy place to get into. I don't know. Seems yeah. Fun. Um, and she also has her master's in international business law from the London School of Economics. Okay. So she's flipping smart. She is. Um, it all started for her. So she worked at a firm where the partner was a co-owner of Sauber Motorsports. And so the firm itself probably did a lot of their legal work. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> the firm partner at one point sold all of his shares, but Manisha was then brought on board to kind of help run the legal side of the team. And then in 2001, she became part of their management board, which isn't actually uncommon if you are kind of like their chief legal officer. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's not an uncommon appointment. Um, in 2010, she was appointed CEO of Sauber Motorsports. And in 2012... Um, she became part owner, and later in that year, she became the team principals. Principal, my bad. Excellent. Not an S on that word. And then in 2017, she actually left Sauber and f later formed KDC Racing, which competes in Formula 4. And fun fact, um, KDC Racing is uh, Monisha Kettleborn and Emily D. Comberti. So two females have started this Formula 4 racing team. Well, good for them. That's kind of... Kind of really, really cool, actually. That is really cool. So, yeah. Yeah, she is quite the badass. She is quite the, she's like the intelligent badass, so I yeah. kind of have a girl crush on her. It's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm into it. I can get on board with that. I'm not too ashamed to admit that. Nope. I'm, I'm comfortable enough with myself. I've got a little bit of a girl crush on her. I'm always excited when lawyers get involved in racing. It makes me feel better for us as a <laughs> occupation. Right. Oh, we do have souls, some of us. <laughs> we do have life outside of the world, of our, you know, the courtroom. Yay! Well, you're a lawyer and a ginger, so. I have no soul. That's not true. You have lots of souls. I do have lots of souls. <laughs> you steal them from others. Like a cat who steals breath, I just steal souls. Exactly. Exactly. Uh... Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> so, Monisha is our woman of the week, and she's also, she was, I'm not sure if she is anymore, um, she was one of the Formula One ambassadors, like the female ambassadors in motorsports that they had. Have. Uh -huh. They still have them. I don't, I don't know if she's still one or not, but she was at one point, so that's good i think that's that's the kind of woman you kind of want in that role like i know Absolutely. they have a lot of, of drivers but you know there's other parts of it so she's one of them shit we didn't make up so the 1981 indianapolis 500 
<clears throat> before we were born, so I'd like to put that out there. Yep. It all started, let me take you back, it all started in lap 146, where there was an incident that caused a full course caution. So they opened the pits, and both Mario, who was P1 at the time, and Bobby Unzer, who was P2, pitted. What happened was, as they exited pit lane, Bobby kind of stayed in the apron at the 500 and passed like 14 cars. Hmm. Mario also passed a few cars as well, which, as we all know, um, you cannot pass cars on a yellow like that. Um, you can kind of feed in if you're coming out of pit lane, but that's only allowed kind of within a boundary yeah. sort of area. Um, yeah. What's more interesting is that nobody kind of reacted to it at the time. In fact, one of the things that I, I saw when I was reading about all of this was that it was more the coverage of ABC during the rebroadcast where they would also have additional commentary where people like lost their shit. Like, you're not supposed to do that. He's passing all of these cars. So Interesting. So the race ultimately ended with Bobby Unzer as the winner. Mario came in second. Hmm. And then the shit show began. And it it makes me a little twitchy eyed as an attorney. All right. So Sunday, after the rebroadcast, or right around the time of the rebroadcast, Mario filed a protest with USAC, who is the sanctioning board. Yes. So saying that like he did all this. Fair, he wanted a pony. Yes, exactly. An Italian stallion, if it, as it were. <laughs> Sorry, it was right there. <laughs> it was right there. I couldn't help myself. So then on Monday, USAC penalized Unzer with a one-position penalty, so he got bumped down to P2, and so Andretti was declared the winner. So Bobby got to celebrate everything on the race. Mario got to celebrate everything at the victory banquet. All right. Um, so then, obviously, on Monday, Unzer, who was with Penske at the time, filed their protest. USAC denied it. And then Wednesday, following the race, um, Team Penske filed the appeal with the USAC board. Um, which, I know we talked a lot about um, decisions are not final, but this was kind of a weird race control decision. And some things, if they refer to your points or an award you have some wiggle to appeal yes so this kind of fits under those very rare exceptions of appeals yes so then june so now we're in june all right they held a hearing and i don't know who i need to get in contact with to find a transcript of this hearing but uh, apparently it was a shit show like people were just asking the most random of questions like, on the one uh, hand, I want to read it, but on the other hand, I don't know. I would love to get our hands on the transcript, and then you and I can do a dramatic reading of it. Yeah, that actually might need to happen now that I think about it. Yeah. Because that might be the only way my lawyer brain can make th make it through that hearing without just yeah. starting to stab people. So, Because apparently at one point, they just adjourned the meeting. <laughs> and I don't like that's part of why I wanted did somebody just be like yeah we're adjourning see you guys later and so it was it stops and they came back in July wow and I don't think it was like a we're adjourning 30 days have September April so they weren't adjourning in June like June 30th and then coming back July 2nd it I feel like there was a stretch of time between <laughs> yeah like at least three weeks that's kind of how I feel about it yeah. So they finished the hearing up in July, and then in October, so we are way out now from, I mean, the season's over. Yeah. The season is over at this point. The USAC board voted two to one to reinstate Bobby Unzer at, as the winner. And here's <laughs> why. They hung it on the fact that the race official did not do anything at the time that this happened. So this, well, is, this is going on, and nobody penalized them, and they said by not... I mean, really, it's the fact that if you see it happen as an official, and you let it happen, it's almost a tacit, okay, why not? It's fine. Well, and you and I have discussed this before, with the fact that race control does not 
um, it, it doesn't enforce all of its rules equally across the board. I would agree. Um, yeah. And I mean, this is clearly not a new issue. So I do understand the board's decision yeah. because yes, if they didn't penalize it at the time, then it should stand because race control has the right to penalize or not penalize. In this case, I think somebody just had their head up their ass and wasn't paying attention. Right. This is definitely um, one of them that they would have been like, you're not, you're not allowed to do that. Stop it. Yeah. I mean, they clearly just, yeah, we're not fucking paying attention because exactly. um, th- yeah, that's, that's a big no, no, but since it did pass. Well, so yeah, very yeah. interesting. And again, why I think that there should be more uniform yeah. penalties of breaking rules. Either everything gets called or nothing gets called. And you can't just pick and choose. I also think it's a good argument why we should be on race control. Agree. I mean... Agree, because I'm not going to play favorites. No, I really... Like, I, I have favorites, but I will not pay favorites. Okay? Oh, hell no. I will penalize everybody. I'll be handing out, like, you get a penalty. You get a penalty. Everybody get a yeah. penalty! Yeah, be handing out penalties like Oprah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then again, absolute power does corrupt. Absolutely. I mean, I just would re- I just would rely on my OCD, my inner OCD. Yeah. That would want everything to be even. And I would say this: a driver can yell at me, a team owner can yell at me. I have been yelled at by m- much more powerful men. Like I don't care. <laughs> just put my shades on, flip up the deuces, chuck up the deuces and leave. Like, whatever, you're still getting penalized. You can yell all you want. Right. Will Power could flip me the double birds. I wouldn't give two shits. I'm like, that's cute. Guess who's getting another penalty? Nope. No. No, yeah. in fact, my, my favorite thing to say, uh, well, to kids, but especially to adults, mm-hmm. when I have been yelled at unnecessarily, is when they get all done, to just look at them. Are you done now? That's oh, that's a classic move. It's a good move. Are, are are you done now? But are you done now? Are you done now? Okay. Because <laughs> there's no. You can't come back from that. There's no more respectful way to be extremely disrespectful and be like, <laughs> okay, well, you can get fucked. Yeah. We're moving on. No, yeah, that's adorable. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps uh... or. Are, are you done now? Are you done now? Oh, okay. <sighs> and uh, so Mario had that win taken away from him. He did have that win ultimately taken away from him. And he complained at one point because apparently something similar happened in Formula One. No shit. Uh, yes. I don't know what race. <laughs> when he was quoted uh, somewhere saying like, it's just like the Formula One race where that happened. And I was like, ugh, that's rough. Uh. That's unlucky. That's what that is. That's, yeah. That is unlucky. Oh, Mario. Oh, Mario. Well, I guess it's time. I guess it is time to white flag it. It is. What do you got? Well, I wish that we had been watching Indy Cars today, but based on the weather, not really an option. <laughs> um, so I am instead <laughs> looking forward um, to the Phoenix race in a week mm-hmm. and a half. That'll be a good time. Yeah. And uh, and I'm just really excited for, for May to get going. Uh, it is sneaking up on us, and uh, we've got a few a few things that we're going to do to get everybody geared up for May. Yep. Um, one of which is what not to wear. <laughs> so we are going to address everything you need to know about what to wear to the track. And, uh, yeah, and then I've got a blog series that will be coming out. Yeah, it's going to be good. So for for you Indy 500 virgins, perfect. Or for those of you who are veterans and just want to have a hearty laugh, <laughs> it's gonna be so, great. It'll be a good time. What do you got, Molly? Um, I just remembered that last like last week they unveiled the crest for the USS Indianapolis, and it actually has two checkered flags on it. That's right. I saw that. It looks super cool. It I looks, love that. It's really cool. I think that's really great. You know, the original story of the USS Indianapolis, not that great. Nope. Um, but I'm excited that they've christened another ship and that part of the crest is the checkered flags. Obviously, you know, it's it's a big deal. And we are, of course, thankful for everybody's service. And I am glad to know that the flagship for the for Indies got the checkered flags on it. I am, too. Yeah. Um, in fact, it... This isn't nearly as important 
Uh, I'm just going to preface that. Uh, but I was scrolling on Facebook the other day, and there was some article about um, like Adidas shoes or something, and they had artists paint a pair of each shoes for each of the 50 states. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that each each shoe was supposed to be painted like something that represented that that state. And so, of course, I'm like scrolling through trying to, you know, get to get to Indiana. I'm like, all right, what they put for us, what they put. And the entire shoe was black and white checks, and I was not disappointed. Oh, that's amazing. I was like, all right, whichever artist did this knows what's up. Yeah, because they could have easily just gone with a core motif. <laughs> or, Absolutely. Or a basketball motif. It's fine. But, yeah, yeah that's amazing so, that it was checkered. That's cool, too. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. So, but yep, we've got checkered flags on the official crest for the USS Indianapolis, and here's hoping that this particular ship has a little bit better destiny. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you want to take a minute and look up that story, go for it. Uh, I will not relay it to you right now. It's horrifying. No, no, it it is. It is quite horrifying. And on that note about checkered flags, let's wave the checkered flag. Let's wave the checkered flag. Thanks for listening. Have a good week. Bye, guys.